What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us at this LED. I'm going to have to show you this game because I couldn't believe it. I was looking up what were the top selling games because a lot of people have been asking us about games. We haven't covered games in a while. We do have three documentaries on the subject, though. You can get those at littlelightstudios.tv towards slash shop, and they're called Controller 1, Controller 2, Hidden Characters, and Controller 3. Three documentaries on this subject. And it starts, you know, it starts from kind of the ground up. How Nintendo got started from a card game. Interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. And a lot of those clips are on our channel. But I want to talk about this game right here because it is not just some little in the corner type game. It's not some fan made thing. It's not a, a computer only type game. A lot of games come out on computers because people can program games. This is on console. This is on Nintendo. It started out as a family oriented system. Actually, Nintendo, when it first came out, said that they would not represent any kind of religion. They wouldn't represent Christianity. They wouldn't represent the occult. They wouldn't have a cross. They wouldn't have a pentagram. But all that's gone out the window. And I can't think of any games that actually glorify God. But when it comes to the occult, oh, there's a lot of them. We're going to look at this game. Check this out. So look at the statistics for the lifetime sales of video game consoles worldwide as of July 2022. This is this year. 2022, the highest selling consoles are PlayStation 2, ironically enough. That was one of my favorite consoles back when I played a lot of gaming, but man, it's old. But number five on the list is the Nintendo Switch. Notice a lot of them are handheld systems. A lot of people are doing handheld stuff now. So on the Switch, we got this game called Bayonetta. Now, I thought this was interesting. When I looked into this, I saw this uh, forum and somebody asked the topic, is it okay for Christians to play Bayonetta? Good question. I like this guy, Aaron. He, he seems very sincere. He wants to know, hey, what do you guys think? Is it okay for a Christian to play video games or this game? He says, so Bayonetta 3 was recently announced for the Switch, as well as a port of the first one and its sequel. Both of these games are highly praised and reviewed and considered to be the best in the genre. I would like to play them when they come out, but I have concerns as a Christian. I'm glad you do, brother. Use that discernment. Now, this isn't going to be a topic about whether my religious beliefs are right. I need genuine answers from other people who have struggled with the same thing. First of all, Bayonetta fights angels. Even though technically in the game they aren't, quote, angelic, they are actually the bad guys. Second, Bayonetta is a witch who has made packs with demons. Third is the language and symbols in the game. Are they made up or do they come from an actual devil worshiping source? Most of the time this kind of stuff doesn't bother me and I don't usually care. People will say, quote, it's just a game. We hear that every day. But I want to make sure I'm not going to offend God or jeopardize my soul, which personally I doubt will happen. Anyways, thanks for the help. Good night. I love this. I love this guy's asking genuine questions. He wants genuine answers. I wish he knew about our channel. Maybe I can reach out to him somehow. This was <laughs> December 2017. But look at the kind of responses he gets from people. Did you watch Evangelion? Did you or did you play Shin Megami Tenchi? I don't see how playing a game would jeopardize your salvation. Games are purely fantasy. It's like asking, is it okay to read Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter if you're a Christian or comics or manga or just watching TV? Um, those are good questions to ask. If you're a Christian, is it okay to watch Harry Potter? Glamorizing witchcraft. The other, uh, the next one says, you must have a low opinion of God. Look out, look at the spiritual warfare here. This guy's wanting uh, an answer, a legitimate answer, but instead he's getting belittled ridiculed right he's not getting answers they're not saying no god doesn't care because of this this and this they're not giving any kind of evidence or real answer they're attacking what he thinks about god you know you must have a low opinion of god to think a platinum video game would offend him also it's a japanese game so like 99 percent of christian themes in japanese entertainment it's only there because the developers think it would be cool wow there's less than 1% of Christians in Japan. And yet, so much of it has Christian themes in it. Anime, tons of it. We have, a, we have a three hour documentary in four parts on anime. So much of it has Christian themes and it's always inverted. The gospel's always on its head. God is the villain. 
Satan is the good guy. How does it all, if, if they're just grabbing at Christian things because it looks cool, it's not gonna always be inverted, but it is, it seems to be. The stories in Bayonetted are pure nonsense. They've just grabbed various bits of imagery from Christianity for the most part. It's about as meaningful as Shiva appearing as an ice goddess is meaningful to Hinduism. I doubt it would bother any Christians unless you're in the school of thought where you couldn't watch Harry Potter because it promotes witchcraft. But if you're in that school of thought, you're not going to have much fun in general anyway. Wow. Belittling him. You're not going to have much fun if you're a Christian and you can't have fun with witchcraft. Can you have fun without playing games that glamorize witchcraft and sorcery or watching movies that glamorize witchcraft and sorcery? We don't partake take in that and we have tons of fun. We actually like to go out and have fun and, and do things. <laughs> but let's look at Bayonetta. Part three is coming out this year in October. So these are, this is about the game. It says Bayonetta was nominated for and won several end of the year accolades. Has sold over a million units worldwide by 2010. We're in 2022, so over a million were 12, 12 years ago. And is cited as one of the best video games ever made. Look, we're not talking about some little fan-made game. We're not talking about some Flash game on the internet. This is selling millions and millions of copies. And this is part three. And... Uh, it's won awards. It's been acclaimed the best video game ever made. Reception. How was this game received? Both Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2 received generally positive reviews from critics. According to review uh, aggregator Met Metacritic, Bayonetta 2 was nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards in 2014. This game is exalted and praised. So what's the setting in the characters? Bayonetta takes place in Vigrid, a fictional city in Europe, and she is a witch who shapeshifts. So they're coming right out of the gates. They're not trying to hide it like, oh, she's a, a fairy or she's some kind of magical, you know, they're not trying to sugarcoat it anyway. She's a witch. They're going to tell you that. A witch who shapeshifts and uses various firearms along with magical attacks. She performs with her hair by what? By summoning demons to dispatch her foes. She is a witch who summons demons. All right, so who are the enemies? I mean, if she's if she's a witch that summons demons, they're gonna come right out of the gates and tell you that this is witchcraft. This is a documentary about how the game was made, so it's kind of a play on words, witchcraft, because they're crafting the witch, but, you know, they're calling it what it is, witchcraft. In this documentary, this is the creators of the game, they're speaking Japanese, so I just have screenshots here, but you can see the subtitles. And he said, we started with the keyword witch. So what's this game gonna be about? Well, it has to be about a witch. So let's start with the keyword witch. But Bayonetta is a witch and witches have all kinds of wonderful powers. They're not hiding that she's a witch. Some of the, there was a lot of people that worked on this game, including men and women, which I think is ironic, you'll see later, but one of the girls who was creating like the things, like the little uh, items that you find said, by infusing the accessories with specific cultural flavors, Nakam Nakamura, Nakamura was able to give the witches a more global presence. Oh yes, we're so thankful that the witches now have global presence in Japan and, and America, and we're just gonna expand this witchcraft everywhere. What if she wasn't wearing any clothes at all? Wow, now she's not even wearing clothes. But instead, magically had her hair enshrouding her body in the form of clothes. So not just witchcraft, but also like this sex. It's sex sells, right? But that's what I thought was ironic, that women are working on this game. Women are actually modeling the, the girl and her outfits and everything. So they're not offended by this. You know, women used to say... Uh, don't objectify women, but now women are working on the games where she's completely naked or her hair is her clothing. So making of the angels, who are the angels? Are they good guys? I don't know. Let's see. Eventually we got to the point where we had to come up with the enemies for Bayonet to fight. Who is Bayonetta going to fight? During one of the brainstorming sessions, Yoshimaru Mara 
who did the modeling brought up the idea of angels. She should fight angels. Well, we know they're good angels and bad angels, right? Is she fighting fallen angels? Perhaps. Let's see. He thought angels would make for pretty tough enemies, and I had to agree. You'd think the messengers of heaven... Are they fallen angels? No. These are the messengers of heaven would be stronger than the devil. So she is a representation of the devil. Thank you so much. 200 people are in here. Get this word out because this is going to our kids. This is what people are entertaining themselves with. The witch who is compared to the devil by the creator himself said that she's fighting the messengers of heaven, the angels of heaven. And it also made sense for Bayonetta to be fighting them because she's a witch. So he, he knows that witchcraft is evil. You know, there's people out there say, no, witch, witchcraft isn't evil. That's just some archaic Bible thing. No, he knows. She's a witch, so she should be fighting angels from heaven. Traditionally, good always triumphs over evil. That sounds like a good thing, right? But we were going to turn that idea on its head. So is he saying that this witch is a good witch? No. He said that normally good triumphs evil, but in this world, we're gonna say that evil triumphs good. Why would anybody play this game? Why would anybody entertain themselves with a character who is evil triumphing good? Explain that to me. What is good about this? And that was an interesting thought, he said. So he thinks this is a, uh, a unique idea, maybe an original idea. It's no different than everything we've always pointed out. Neon Genesis, they're literally fighting against the angels of heaven. Shin Megami Tenchi, you're literally fighting against Yahweh. This is not an original idea. Nothing about it is original. This is the same satanic propaganda garbage that keeps coming out over and over and over again. There's nothing original about it. That's why we chose angels to be Bayonetta's enemies. We basically said, draw some angels. So they gave it to the guy, hey, draw some angels. I meant, it was, I meant it as a casual request, but the illustrations he produced were amazing. And here's this guy talking. He's the one that drew the angels. Listen to what he says. But when you're told that angels are the enemy, you really don't know what to expect. But when you're told that angels... Okay, I got it. But my thinking was that angels should look divine. So he's going to make the characters look like divine angels from heaven. So listen to what it says here. The realms that Bayonetta inhabits are the game's different settings, which borrow from Dante's divine comedy. Paradiso, heaven, it says. Paradiso, heaven. So she's in heaven when she's doing this stuff. Sometimes at least. Which generally takes place in the form of a heavenly yellow glow uh, golden valley or palace and is the home of the angels the home of the angel enemy foes that she faces so they're telling you that these angels there's no doubt they're from heaven and they're the enemies and also inferno or hell exist which is not visited in the game but contains the infernal demons that bayonetta summons in combat using her hair as the conduit there are some religions that believe that your hair is like an antenna to the spirit world. She uses her hair to summon demons from hell. There's no question about it. They're telling you out of their own mouth. We're not making this up. People tell us all the time, why do you got to make everything about the Bible? We're not making this about the Bible. This is coming right from the creator's mouths. So here they are, the angels of Paradiso. These are the enemies. And notice it says that they have golden halos made of light. There's no question about who they are. You're fighting angels from heaven with halos of light. One of them is named Joy. And you encounter them during chapter 6. Or, yeah, I can't, I don't, can't read Roman numerals. I think that's 6. During chapter 6, at the gates of paradise. So you get to the gates of paradise. You fight an angel from heaven named Joy, who is a seraphim. This is biblical language. That's what these are. What is good about fighting Joy? Is there anything good about this? There's no way to spin this. There's no way you can look at this and say, no, you're just making it something that it's not. You're looking at it the wrong way. No, you're a witch who summons demons from hell. You're fighting angels from heaven named Joy, named Beloved. And, and he says a, a phrase here and it says, may the creator Jubileus grace you. He is an angel saying positive things. May the, may the creator grace you. 
and you kill him. Who's the creator? So this is Paradiso, what it says, Jubileus the Creator. Notice it says alternate names is Heaven, and the Creator is Jubileus. So at some point you actually fight the Creator of Heaven and Earth, and, and her name is Jubileus. Notice it says Jubileus the Creator, and look, the real name is unpronounceable. You know the Bible talks about that God has a name that's unpronounceable, the unpronounceable name of God? actually. Jewish people wouldn't even say the name of God because it was the unpronounceable name. It, it's been kind of translated to Yahweh, but it's four characters and it's unpronounceable because it's just consonants. There's no vowels. So this is not a mistake. This isn't some accident. This isn't some somebody being creative. This is just right out of the Bible, literally turned on its head. And they told you that one of the one of the other angels that you battle, the enemy's name is affinity. I didn't know what this word meant, so I looked it up. Affinity means empathy sympathy harmony accord your people are buying the number one most played game or a game that's very high on the ranks that's selling millions and millions of copies and getting awarded is a witch fighting positive attributes of humanity like sympathy shouldn't we be praising things like sympathy and harmony in the world i thought that's what people always wanted peace and harmony but no, we're playing games that fight against those things. You're fighting harmony. Fidelity. Do you know what that word means? Faithfulness to a person, cause, or belief demonstrated by continuing loyalty and support. It says loyalty, allegiance, obedience, con constancy. It says sexual faithfulness to a spouse or partner. We... The world is pained by 50% of, of uh, marriages ending in divorce. And we're sitting here playing a game where you're a witch fighting against fidelity. And we wonder why the world's in the state it's in. This is exactly where the Bible said we're going to be, guys. In a world that's full of coldness, the hearts are going to turn cold, wicked thoughts continually like the days of Noah. These are some, some other names of the angels. Fairness. We're going to fight against fairness. We're going to fight against worship. We're going to fight against temperance. We're going to kill glory and grace. We're going to kill fearless. We're going to kill all these things. Look, belief, compassion. We're going to kill acceptance. Whoa, we're virtually, we're playing a murder simulator. You realize when people learn how to fly planes, they play a video game that about how to fly a plane. Racers use a racing simulator and people are spending hours upon hours upon hours playing a murder simulator where you put yourself vicariously in that person's spot. 250 people here, thank God, keep sharing this video and you're murdering acceptance, you're murdering enrapture, you're murdering urbane, which means courtesy. You're murdering Graf gravitas which means dignity you see you i hope you guys can see how horrible this is that this is literally nothing that we should be promoting do not try to defend these games <laughs> do not try to defend like oh it's a good witch she's trying to save humanity you're summoning demons and killing uh, moral things where's the cancel culture Where's the cancel culture that's trying to shut down this game that says, oh, I, I don't think anybody should be playing a game where you're murdering acceptance and murdering grace and, and forgiveness and all these things. Where is the cancer culture? <laughs> cancer culture, that's what it is. The cancel culture, where are they at? If this was a game, if this was literally a game where you were, the character was a white supremacist who was murdering different races, different minority races, do you think it would stay up? What if it was a game where you were killing other minorities like LGBT groups? See, this is a, a total biased, one-sided thing. If you're going to be fair across the board, why are we not standing up against this stuff? Because the enemy is the God of this world. And people are not, they're not even batting an eye at this stuff. They're enjoying it. They're spending money on it. They're spending hours of gameplay on it. And then they're calling us crazy for for showing you what they said about what the creators are saying about the game. This is right out of the horse's mouth, guys. So another thing that they're doing with this is 
sexual exploitation, objectifying women, using sex to sell the occult. This is what happened in the Bible when uh, the Israelites were up against the enemy and the enemy said, hey, we can send in the pagan women to seduce them. And then the Israelites won't be powerful because they won't have their God. They'll fall for uh, idolatry. They'll fall for false religions if we send the women in. Now we got the game that says the core theme of the game and its protagonist attack is sexiness. It says to fit the theme of her femininity and sexuality. What is a we're playing a game. What does sexuality have to do with a game? It says she bleeds rose petals and all these things. It says her giant boot fist and monster attacks reveal some of her body. Her hair is magically formed into clothes, but must be stripped from her body to form these attacks. Because remember, her hair is what summons the demons. And if her hair is wrapped around her body, but she has to use her hair to summon the demons to attack, then it must come off of her body, right? So this game has a mature rating for nudity. But do you think any of those ratings actually keep kids from playing these games? Even better yet, men, grown people don't need to play these games. There's no age limit on sin. Jesus says, unless you become like a little child, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you would not set this before your child's eyes, then you shouldn't be setting it before your own eyes. It says, he worked with Shim Shimazaki on the model's makeup, referred to foreign models with similar bodies, and said he really wanted to get Bayonetta's backside perfect because he was into that sort of thing. So he's really crafting her body in a way that uh, appeals sexually to the player who's constantly seeing the back of her. This is a third person shooter. All you see is the back of her all the whole time. But this is what's interesting. The language spoken by the angels, the language spoken by the angels in the game and for all infernal summons is Enochian, a divine language described by John D and his colleague, Edward Kelly. Now, <laughs> This is where it gets really occultish. I'm not making this up. This is straight from the source. They're saying that the angels, their language, and when you summon demons, the words that are spoken is Enochian and that it comes from John D and Edward Kelly. Now let's look into that. Enochian is an occult constructed language. That's all you need to know right there. But it says it's said by its originators to have been received from angels. These two guys literally had communication with with angels while practicing the occult and were given a language by occultic angels and it says recorded in the private journals of john d and his colleague edward kelly in the late 16th century england kelly was a scryer do you know what a scryer is we're about to show you kelly was a scryer who worked with d in his magical investigations the language is integral, integral, integral to the practice of Anakian magic. So this, now we're going, I mean, you might try to say all this is fantasy and fairy tale, but now we're introducing demonic language, occultic demonic language into the game. And it was, it was uh, originated from a scryer. What is a scryer? Here's Edward Kelly. He was into the occult, says an English Renaissance occultist in the 1500s scrying also known by various names such as seeing or peeping think about that word peeping we're gonna visit that in the Bible scrying is known as seeing or peeping is the practice of looking into a suitable medium in the hope of detecting significant messages or visions the objective might be personal guidance prophecy revelation or inspiration but down the ages scrying in various forms also has been a means of divination or fortune telling it remains popular in occult circles discussed in many media both modern and centuries old so you wonder why a, a psychic uses a crystal ball this is why she's scrying she's looking in a reflective surface whether it's a bowl of water or a shiny black piece of glass like this this is called scrying when you're looking into that and you're asking demonic angels to give you a prophecy a vision a revelation so let's go back to what aaron asked 
This is the guy who had real concern about playing this game as a Christian, and he got mocked and ridiculed for it. I didn't see one legitimate response to him. I didn't see one reason why, no, this game is okay. And I also didn't see anyone saying, hey, this game is not okay. It was just mock and ridicule. But he asked, third is the language and symbols in the game. Are they made up or do they come from actual devil worshiping source? We just found out. They literally tell you this is Enochian language that came from the occult. And it's a real language that was written down by people who were scrying and communicating with demons. That's in the game that you're playing for hours upon end. You're inviting demons into your home. Satan wants to know how can he get into your home? How can he do it? Because he's not a gentleman like Jesus. He's not knocking on the door of your heart and hoping that you open up and let him in. He's going to try every trick in the book. He's going to say, hey, a Ouija board, it's fun. It's just a game. Hey, tarot cards, it's really fun. It's like a parlor trick. Hey, that game that it's about a witch who fights demons. Yeah, why don't you play that? It's really fun. And you're inviting demons in as they literally chant occultic spells that summon demons in the game. What do you think's happening in your, in your home, in the real world? Uh, we're, I'm just showing you right here. It says the language spoken by the angels and for all this, the infernal summons is Enochian. They tell you that themselves. What does the Bible have to say about this? Because the Bible is the source of truth and it's a timeless book. It's the living word of God. It's never going to die. We're going to be studying this thing through all eternity. We're never going to, it's never completed. It's a living word that re reveals things to you all through the eternity. Isaiah 8, 19 says, And when they shall say to you, Seek unto them who have familiar spirits, and unto wizards like sorcerers and witch witches, that peep, remember, we just read that word, that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living and to the dead? God's saying this is an abomination when you go to these people who have familiar spirits who are summoning demons and wizards and witches who are peeping like scryers and chanting these Enochian words. Revelation 21, 8 says, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, that's highlighted because this game glorifies all of that. Murder, whoremongering, sorcerer, and idolatry. All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is not an easy message to give. I don't even really like reading messages like this, but this is the truth. What are we doing? We're, we should not be messing around with this stuff. Jesus is coming soon. Look at this shirt. The second coming is coming soon. I believe it. Look all around the world. People are being entertained by this stuff. This would not have flown in 1930 or something. We are at a new low. Acts 19.19 19 says, Many of them also which use curious arts, magic and sorcery, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Books were not cheap back in the day. We can look up almost any book digitally now, and it's practically free. But back when people handwritten books, handwritten books were hundreds of thousands of dollars. And now they said, hey, we're getting rid of this stuff. We're not going to keep it on our shelf as a collector. We're going to burn it. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care if that game cost $100. We don't often you do little calls like this, like, hey, burn your CDs and all that stuff. And that's not on us. That's on you guys. Pray to the Holy Spirit. What should you do with these things? Should you pass them on to your friends? Should you sell them to somebody else so that they can have demons in their home? Should you get rid of these things is the question. Galatians 5.19 through 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, things that are glorified in this game, uncleanness, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, like murdering angels, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, like fighting God, the creator, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things will not inherit 
the kingdom of God. This is a solemn message, guys. Do we want to inherit the kingdom of God? Do, we can't be messing around with, oh, I said a little prayer when I was nine. I'm good to go. Once saved, always saved. It doesn't matter how I live. This says otherwise. It says if you're messing around with this stuff, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It continues to say, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Do you remember those? Yeah, those were the angels that you're murdering in the game. You're literally murdering the fruits of the spirit while you're embracing witchcraft and idolatry and all these things against there is against such there is no law the whole law agrees with all these things the fruits of the spirit and they that are christ have crucified the flesh we have to die to the flesh daily pick up our cross every day and it is not an easy walk jesus told us it wouldn't be easy but we can do all things through christ who strengthens us not some things all things and it's a daily walk it's not a one and done I have to ask God to give me strength every single day. I cannot do it without Him. None of us can. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walk means to do it, to act it out. Don't just be hearers of the Word, but doers. Romans 1.32. We've used this one a lot. If this is your first time seeing this video or any of our videos, this might be new to you. It says who knowing the judgments of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. If you sin, the wages of sin is death. But it goes on, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Is that making sense? Not just doing it. You can say, well, I don't really practice witchcraft. But are you taking pleasure in someone that does witchcraft, whether it's Harry Potter, or Bayonetta, she is a witch that summons demons from hell to kill holy angels from heaven. This is one of the top selling games of all time, acclaimed as the best game ever made. Look guys, it's time to start taking our walk serious. It's time to start exposing the darkness because Satan has a lot of devices out there. And if we don't sound that alarm, if we're not the watchmen, how many people are gonna fall off the cliff because they didn't hear the truth from us. It's time for us to separate ourselves from the world, take our walk seriously. 280 people are here, so thankful for that. Protect the avenues of the soul, guys. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. This is not just a children's song, it's a song for all of us. It's the truth. I love you. If you guys were blessed by this, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm. It helps get this message out to many others who are going to fall prey to this trap of the enemy. Please share this video on all social media platforms. We want everyone to see this because Satan is subtle and crafty and he's a deceiver. We love you. We'll see you next time on LED.